And essentially, they were talking about just cuts to everything. They were talking about a freeze on the entire discretionary part of the budget, not uh, obviously the military, right? Did they get to the military? Well, how much of the woke military did they cut out in their budget? Hmm. Um, it's just a freeze on discretionary spending for like 10 years. Um, the, I mean, just the size of the country is going to be, I don't know, what, uh, 5 10% larger in, in 10 years? It's absurd. It's, a, it's absolutely absurd. Uh, you Isn't know, that what they got in 2011? It was a five-year discretionary spending freeze. There was a there was a whole sequester that happened on both sides, and it was it was um, highly problematic. But um, here is Jody Arrington, Republican from Texas, uh, on with uh, Fox's uh, Shannon Bream, um, calling for work requirements. Um, this is. Yeah, I don't know how to put this. Uh, just one of the stupid. Uh, put aside the most heartless and um, and regressive, but it's also stupid if you really want to save money in some fashion. And we don't want to trap uh, people in dependency on the government. Able-bodied adults receiving public assistance should be looking for a job or working. That that's a fundamental responsibility and expectation, certainly of the American people. Well, and just to clarify, so in saying you want to go back to fiscal caps from 22, as the Washington Post points out, that would mean cutting back from where we were in 23. That's where Democrats get the line that there are cuts. There is so much wasteful <laughs> Washington spending and bloat coming okay, out of but COVID. Cuts, to be fair, that yeah, no, we're okay. going to reduce spending. The president, in his budget, wants to increase spending mm -hmm. by a hundred billion dollars in discretionary, and more than that, trillions of dollars in non-discretionary mandatory spending. I mean, it's the spending from this administration, the trillions of dollars, that has ignited the inflationary firestorm that Americans are suffering from. Of course we need to right-size and return to reasonable levels of spending. Okay. Um, first off, uh, mandatory non-discretionary spending the president is not raising that. Uh, and here's the clue that you can tell, because it's mandatory. It is uh, money that is untouchable, Social Security and Medicare, for reasons so that it doesn't get politicized like this, because it's the, um, uh, the, the best programs the government has, and the American people love it, period, end of story on that. Um, the, I don't know why the guy won't say the word cuts to this, mm. but the idea of work requirements, first off, we already... SNAP already has work requirements. It already basically says you got to try and go get a job. There's a certain amount of hours that you got to spend a month uh, looking for a job. Um, I had it right here. Yeah. But uh, there, I mean, uh, people, uh, SNAP, what are SNAP work requirements? You go you Google it and you look it up. It exists already. This is just a game they play. But to the extent that they add work requirements to anything else, play this clip from Arkansas. Uh, this is when Arkansas added work requirements to Medicaid. Here's the thing. If you are eligible for Medicaid, chances are either one of two things. One, you're working a job and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't pay enough for you. Uh, you still essentially living within uh, a certain measure of poverty, depending on which state you're in, 100% or 133% of poverty. Or uh, you can't find a job. I have no doubt in my mind that there are people out there who, for whatever reason, are like, I'm not going to work. I don't want to work. And but I need health insurance. I'm going to be on Medicaid. Over 80 percent of SNAP households with a non-disabled adult um, have people who are working in the 25 month period when they're receiving these. these, uh, these oh, of course. Because just, we just, have a working poor in this country and the, we're, th these programs are subsidizing low wages by these mega corporations. Right. And but, but the bottom line is, is like th there is no doubt there are people who are saying I don't want to work and uh, but I do want health insurance. And, and, and just for a moment, let's just say that we, you know, that is problematic for the sake of argument. OK, because I'm not so really terribly concerned about the, the, those few people who are doing that. But let's just assume that there are those people. They are so few and far between 
There are far more white collar criminals. There are far more uh, people who are scamming everything in corporate America or uh, uh, other government services. There are people who are double dipping on their their uh, mortgage interest deduction. There are people out there who are gaming the system and avoiding taxes by, um, you know, wealthy people taking out loans against their uh, uh, their life insurance policies so that essentially their income is uh, tax free and just waiting as their uh, their insurance policies accumulate and they they die with debt and then their uh, their life insurance pays off their debt and it's just a way of escaping taxes if you're really concerned about that that's a much bigger problem but the point is this is about demonizing people who are living in low income and here it is example of how ineffective it is arkansas uh, department of human services implemented a, a work requirement for uh, uh medicaid here's a, the uh here is arkansas channel seven uh reporting on that a new study from Harvard University is highly critical of Arkansas's Medicaid work requirement. It claims the requirement left Arkansans with more debt and less affordable health care while having virtually no effect on the state's workforce. KTV's senior political reporter. Pause I mean, we, 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 we can listen a little more to that, but those are the, it's like that's the trifecta. Yeah, thank you for the headline. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, cynically, it's like, well, maybe it was uh, it worked exactly as designed. <laughs> But the amazing thing, too, is it costs the state more money Yeah, because you've got to implement the whole bureaucracy to enforce this work requirement. It doesn't create new jobs. It ends up leaving individuals with debt and without health care. Well, that's good for them. Yeah, that, I mean, it's really it's like a. It's a it's a it's a it's a lose 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 uh, and, strategy. And what was the state that just had to pay tons of money to take people off of uh, SNAP uh, rolls? It's a slightly different story, but this has happened in another Republican led state. It might. Oh yeah, it, it, this is Bradley. this is not even about saving money. This yeah. is about punishing people and creating even more so. It's also sort of like creating and feeding into this idea that you, if you uh, are poor. Or living in poverty or living close to poverty you are morally degenerate yeah. that's what this is this is just really like let's demonize people living in poverty or low-income people uh now that's that's what it is that that's the project it started at the beginning for this A new study from Harvard University is highly critical of Arkansas's Medicaid work requirement. It claims the requirement left Arkansans with more debt and less affordable health care while having virtually no effect on the state's workforce. KETV's senior political reporter Maureen Glisevic brings us reaction to this from the governor and lawmakers. Implementing Arkansas's Medicaid requirement costs the state and federal government more than $26 million. That's according to the latest Harvard study published this week. It also states that it left more medical debt and less affordable health care. The study reinforces what those of us who opposed work requirements knew from the beginning, that these types of mechanisms are flawed and they don't work. It was in March of 2018 when the governor announced a federal waiver paving the way for the work rule, requiring able-bodied Arkansans to work, train or volunteer for 20 hours a week in order to keep their Medicaid coverage. Pause it for one second. We should also remind you that Asa Hutchinson, he's the reasonable Republican mm -hmm. running. He's the reasonable Republican. Uh, honestly, oxymoronic. Continue. Not only did we put in place a policy that doesn't really do what it's intended to do, but we executed it so poorly. Uh, I think the study showed that more than 70 percent of our Kansans uh, who were subject to this requirement didn't even really understand the program or know when it was in effect. And that's just inexcusable. Senator Missy Irvin disagrees. She says while her biggest takeaway was the lack of communication between agencies. There's and nothing those written on that paper. I assure you. There was zero connectivity between a Medicaid recipient and those with the Division of Workforce Services. You had all those different programs available, that, but there was no communicating between the agencies. And so that's my biggest takeaway is how do you break down those silos and how do we work together within our agencies to serve that person in like a Life 360. 
She adds part of how the study was conducted does not paint an accurate picture. This was done by a survey, and admittedly in the survey, they said that they only had a 15% response rate. So it's not a survey or it's not a study that's based on actual administrative enrollment data, um, and it's not based on claims data either. Maureen Glisevic, Channel 7 News. Yeah, where was the governor's reaction? Well, we couldn't get her to comment on that. Yeah. I mean, and look, this is this dynamic of... of of work requirements for all sorts of, of, of government support has failed in an almost identical way. All it is is designed to kick people off the rolls or, to be fair, to just create a narrative that, um, that low-income people, that people living in low-income are morally degenerate. The, 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 the example I was thinking of was Iowa. Thank you, Bradley, for sending that to me. Iowa Republicans spent $18 million just essentially to kick people um, off of uh, social programs and SNAP. So, I mean, like this is happening throughout this, uh, a variety of Republican-led states. The cruelty is the point. Yep. The desperation is the point. Gives employers, bosses more leverage over people. That's what they want.